Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. So today the topic of our webinar is mastering Kubernetes continuous delivery with Helm, Tecton and Ar Argo CD. So uh, our presenters today are is Mustafa and Asfa who will be uh, joining us and will be presenting on this topic. At the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A session as well. And if you have any questions, you can ask them. And I hope you all have a great time today. Uh, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes so that other attendees can join us as well. Um, okay, Aspa and Mustafa, I think we can start uh, with the presentation and the webinar now. All right. Thank you, Sanya. Am I audible? Uh, yes, I think we can begin now. All right. Okay, thank you so much, Sanya. So, hello, everyone. I am Aspa Mamtas. I am a lead DevOps engineer at Stigator. I have been working with Kubernetes, OpenShift, and DevOps tooling for a while now. Uh, today, I'll be sharing my experience with Helm Tecton and Argo CD, and also how we use these tools. I also have Mustafa here with me, and now I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. My full name is Mohammed Mustafa, and I am working as a DevOps engineer at Stickator. My role over here is to deploy users' applications onto the cluster. And it also includes writing tools, automation, and charts that uh, that uh, that implement or aid in easing the deployment process for applications. In addition to that, I also I am also responsible for CI/CD pipelines and work for implementing CI/CD pipelines and workflows for the user applications and different services. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Okay, so the topic of today's webinar is mastering mastering CD in Kubernetes through Argo CD, Tecton, and Helm. Here's the agenda for today. We'll be briefly discussing what Argo CD, Tecton, and Helm are. Then we'll go over our opinionated use of these tools. And we'll also be discussing the best practices, what we've learned while using these tools, and what we've struggled with, with and how we solve those problems. Then at the end, we'll have a demo and also a short, a short question answer session. Moving on. So let's take a look at what is Helm, what is Tecton, and what is Argo CD. So I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with Helm. Helm is basically a package management tool for Kubernetes. Uh, I'm sure whoever has used Kubernetes knows that when you need to deploy a Kubernetes, source, a Kubernetes resource on the cluster, you need to use kubectl apply, and then you can apply the, that resource on the cluster. But that's pretty hard to do because uh, it doesn't have much reuse, re reusability, and for managing your Kubernetes resources, it becomes a little hard to do. So Helm has now become a standard for doing just that. It basically packages your resources, your Helm resources, inside of what we call a Helm chart. We have a templates folder inside the, that Helm chart, which contains all of the resources that you need to deploy for a standalone application or a standalone chart. And then you can configure that chart based upon your needs through configuring the values for your resources inside of the values file. Like I've already said that Helm has become a standard for deploying your Kubernetes resources on the cluster. We make a lot of use of Helm uh, at Stigator, and you'll 
be looking at that uh, in the next slides. So more on that later. Then we have Tecton. So Tecton is basically a CI CD tool, which means you can deploy your CI CD five times using Tecton. Uh, one special thing about Tecton that is distinct from other CI CD tools is that it's Kubernetes native. What we mean by that is that the Helm resources that we have, we run them as Kubernetes, we run them as containers and pods on Kubernetes. It is designed designed specially for Tecton, and a benefit that Tecton provides is that it is highly configurable. So it you can change a lot of things in the resources that you need to de deploy for running a pipeline. So that's a benefit that it provides. There are some components that you'll need to be aware of for the purpose of this webinar, and I'll go over them briefly. So we have something called tasks in 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 Tecton, a task is basically composed of multiple steps, and a step might be some sort of script that you might need uh, that you might need to run inside of your pipeline. Then we have something called a pipeline. A pipeline is composed of, of multiple tasks, and those tasks are added in a sequential manner inside of pipelines. And once you trigger a pipeline, you get a pipeline run, which is basically an instance of your pipeline, and then the pipeline run in turn creates the task runs. Then there's also a concept of event listener and trigger. An event listener basically listens to the events, uh, and then it triggers the pipeline. So let's suppose you may create a pull request on GitHub, then you send a payload to the event listener. The event listener will continuously be listening to events, and then it will trigger a pipeline using a trigger. So these are some basic concepts that you need to understand for running or using Tecton. Moving on, Argo CD. So what is Argo CD? Argo CD is nothing but a continuous delivery tool. Just like you have Circle CI, you have Jenkins, and all of these things, you also have Argo CD. Uh, the special thing about Argo CD and the reason why we also use it very widely as Secretor is that it's streamlined and focused for Kubernetes. It's designed specially for it. And what you can do is that you can create something called an Argo CD application, and then you can make that Argo CD application watch multiple resources inside of your GitOps repository. So you can create an Argo CD application, and then you can point it to a Helm chart plain YAML or Kubernetes resources, customized applications, and then Argo CD will be responsible for deploying those things on your cluster. Mustafa will be explaining more on how Argo CD works and how we have structured the applications inside of our infrastructure. Uh, but for now, this will be enough. Uh, one important thing to note about Argo CD is that it uses the pull strategy instead of the push strategy. What we mean by that is that uh, in the ordinary uh, CD tooling, what you would normally do is that you would push the changes onto the cluster. It's opposite in case of Argo CD. What happens is that you make Argo CD watch the GitOps repository, and Argo CD is actually responsible for pulling the changes from your repository instead of you having to push the changes onto the cluster. So Argo CD runs inside of the cluster, and uh, your cluster actually fetches its current state or the current state of application. Now we are going to jump, jump right into it and I'll be showing you how we have built our CI CD workflow and how we are using these tools. At the end, we'll have a question answer session in which you can ask more questions about um, all of these things or, and what I'm going to show to you. So the first thing that you need to do when you try to build a CI CD solution is that you need to determine how to package your application. And that's very important because your whole, the whole structure and the whole CI CD solution depends on it. So what we've done, uh, again, we just use Helm charts. Uh, it's a standard approach, but we've used it a little differently. 
So we have something called an application chart that we made public and that we also open sourced. That application, generic application chart contains all of the resources that you might need for a standalone application. So we have a generic Helm chart that, that contains deployment, stateful set services, routes, and anything that you might need, might need to deploy your application. I'm gonna quickly switch the tabs and show that application chart to you. So we have this application chart over here. This is a generic chart that we are using all across Decatur to deploy our application. If I open this folder up and if I open the templates folder, you'll see that I have a lot of Kubernetes resources over here. Uh, we have secret services, service accounts, and anything you might need to deploy your application. Then we have some default configurations as well, but most of the things are disabled by default. So when you use this application chart, you need to enable them and then you can use your values file to customize that chart uh, as per your requirements. So again, what we do is that we reference that chart as a dependency and then we configure the values based upon our needs. And then there's another thing that we do is that at the base level, at the root level of our application code, we create a deploy folder and place the Helm chart inside of that deploy folder. The reason for do doing that is that the Tekton pipeline that we build, it looks inside this deploy folder and then it packages the Helm chart and then push it, pushes it to the Helm chart repository. I'll show you an example of this right away. So we have this repository right here, the empty open source. This is an application. Inside of this application, we have this deploy folder. And the deploy folder has this Helm chart. We don't have any resources over here because we don't need them since we have a dependency of the application chart, the generic application chart. And we are just going to reference that and we are going to use the values file to deploy all of the resources that we need. This chart is open source. This has community support as well. So if you find anything is missing in this chart, you can just go ahead and create a pull request there and add the resource that is missing. So we are referencing the application chart, then we are creating the deployment and then we are making some configurations. So this is how we package our applications at Stigator. The benefit of doing this is that this makes the Helm chart highly reusable. We do not need to create separate Helm charts for our application every single time we create a new application. We just reference the generic Helm chart and then we use it right away. So after packaging our application, all right, so I have a question right here. Uh, how many of you have used Tecton? You can answer that in the polls. So do I have any answers? Tanya, can you check? Okay, uh, if anyone of you has used Tecton, you can simply raise your hand right now. Yeah, so as far as we have one of them, uh, David, he has used Tecton. All right. So if anyone of you has used Tecton or whoever, whoever has used Tecton, then he or she might know that Tecton is very complicated. So that was a problem for us. Here are some of the complications or some of the issues with Tecton. Although Tecton has a lot of benefits and the major one being that it's Kubernetes native and you can configure almost everything in Tecton. The issues with Tecton is that it has too many components that you need to deploy. It gets a little hard to manage these components and then at times these components are not usable. So you need to find a way to make them reusable. So this, we had this challenge uh, at Stigator. We needed to use Tecton. Uh, we wanted to use Tecton because of its power, because it's Kubernetes native. But 
it was hard to manage tecton and hard to create pipelines uh, for tecton so after a lot of discussion and a lot of thought we were able to come up with a solution that would fix all of these problems for us and that would make tecton reusable and would make it easier for us to manage the components that we need to deploy for tecton so let's jump into the opinionated use of Tecton at Stigator. So let's see how we solve these problems. <clears throat> Again, we leverage the power of Helm and its power to configure everything on the fly. So what we did is that we packaged the Tecton components inside of a Helm chart. So everything that you need to deploy for a pipeline uh, to be in a running state or the components that you need to build a pipeline, we package them in a Helm chart. Then inside of that Helm chart, we also place the common configurations inside of default config, uh, default config uh, folder. We created that folder. And then again, we set some defaults through the values file. But whenever you need to deploy your pipeline, what you can do is that you can reference your chart and based upon your requirements, you can customize it. All you need to do is reference the chart and place uh, your own customization or your own values inside of the values file. So I am going to show you an example of that as well. Let's head over to So we have this apps GitOps config repository. You don't need to uh, get about the structure of this repository right now, but I am going to show you how we define the pipelines using that chart. So inside here we have a folder and we have a pipeline definition. Now we have this chart over here. If I open up the chart.yaml file, you will see that we are adding a dependency of Stigated Tecton chart, which has all of the components that you need for running Tecton. And then if I go to the values file, you'll be able to see that I'm setting some values over here. So we need workspaces for Tecton, we need a pipe, define a pipeline for Tecton, and then we need to reference some tasks. So we are doing it all through Helm. We are not deploying the raw manifest, which is usually what people do for deploying the Tecton pipelines. Uh, instead, we are using Helm. And again, the benefit of using this is that you can use all of these resources and you can re recreate your pipelines for multiple applications using the same chart and using almost the same values. I am also going to show you the chart that we created so you can get an idea of how uh, the things that are present inside the, that chart. Here's this Stigator Tecton chart. Inside of this Stigator Tecton chart, you'll see that we have these templates. And if I open up these templates, you'll see we have cluster role, cluster role bindings, event listener, uh, role, role bindings. Then we have things called trigger binding triggers, uh, trigger template, and then a pipeline as well. So if I open this up, this is just this is mainly a Helm template. So everything inside this Helm template is configurable and you can give the values for your pipelines to your values file. We have some default configurations over here. A lot of them again are disabled, but you can just reference this chart and you can deploy that chart onto your cluster to deploy a pipeline. So this is how we deploy the pipeline and then one other thing that we've done to make things reusable is that we packaged all of the cluster tasks that we use inside of our pipeline as separate Helm charts. We have a repository for that as well. It's called the Tecton Catalog Repository. It's also public. So anyone, if anyone of you wants to use it, you can just head over to that repository, fetch the Helm chart, and then you can just help install that chart and the cluster task will be deployed on your cluster. Let me show you that repository as well.
Hittectone catalog. Okay. Sorry about that. So here it is. So here are all of the tasks that we are using inside of our pipelines. If I open a simple one up, this Decatur Builder task, you'll see that we have a health chart inside of it. And these tasks, we are fully testing these tasks using something called Tilt. Uh, but you don't need to know about that for now. If I open up the Helm folder, you'll see that the cluster task is packaged in form of a Helm resource. So you can fetch this and you can just apply this on, on the cluster. And again, one other benefit of this is that our tasks are versioned proper, properly. Every time there's a change on this, the chart version is incremented and that is all handled by our pipelines. We just need to uh, make the changes over here and everything is tested and deployed. Then the last thing that we've done to make it easier for us to deploy the Tectron pipelines is that we built an image and we added all of the things that you might need to run inside of a single task or a step inside of that image. So let's see you need the OC CLI or something of that sort. Um, inside of your task. You are running a script that runs OC apply or something like that. Then we've already installed all of these utilities inside of an image and we created this uh, image that has our required tools and then we are just using that image inside of our task. So this makes a lot of things reusable for us. This is basically a workflow of our Tekton CI. I am going to explain this a little. Let's suppose a user creates a pull request or pushes some change, change to your version control system. What will happen is that the version control system will push a payload to your Tekton event listener. Once your event listener has that data, it will trigger the pipeline. What we do in our pipeline is that we check out code, then we perform a lot of testing on that code, then we rebuild the image, we push it to the image repository, then we rebuild the Helm chart that you saw in the deploy folder, we push it to the chart repository. And once these are pushed to, to the repository, we make a change on the GitOps repository that we have. We change the tags of these images inside of the GitOps repository. Now the GitOps repository is being continuously watched by an Argo CD application, which takes the, all of the changes and applies it on the cluster. Now Mustafa will be telling you more about how those changes are applied using Argo CD and also about our GitOps structure. Hello everyone. Thank you for the wonderful explanation about Helm, Argo CD and Tekton and telling us a brief overview of how we package our chart and giving us a brief uh, intro or introduction to how to the CI process. Okay, let's start by a question. How many of you know about the Argo CD apps of apps pattern or have heard about it? If you have, you can raise your hand. Okay. Okay, so we, we have, have a couple of uh, hand raises, uh, Mustafa. Hmm. Okay, great. It's great to know. But it's great to know that people know about the apps of apps pattern. So basically what this deployment pattern means is that we have an root Argo CD application that is pointing towards or watching a, diff a folder in our GitOps repository. And inside that folder, we can deploy one or more child applications. And these child applications can be correlated or they can be considered being a part of an app bundle. And this allows us to create, manage different microservices of the same application as, as a single application. So this 
yeah so let's have an example where we have uh, on, on the right side you can see a diagram and you can see that there is a root application which is deploying three applications the ui application the api app the db app all of these argo cd applications deploy different components of uh, of an application so the ui app will actually deploy the resources responsible for running our uh, application code and this this ui app will actually deploy our front end which can be based on either react angular or any other front end uh, front end technologies and frameworks then we have an api application which will deploy the resources that will be used by the ui application and the ui application will contact the api application the the resources deploy deployed by the api app and this api apps the resources deployed by this or the workloads deployed by the api app will in turn so will in turn connect with the db and to get the information whatever is required by the ui in addition to this we can have more applications that are related as well suppose we need to we need to have a, we need to create a message queue that is required by this application or used by this application we could simply add another argo cd app that can either deploy uh, that can either deploy the the message queues helm chart or we could point to a folder that can contain the raw manifests the raw kubernetes manifests that come together to uh, as an app as a uh, for, that come together as an application okay so i'll what is gitops gitops is a natural evolution of infrastructure and code and devops previously the delivery engineers and the build engineers used to perform all kinds of application deployments manually people soon realized that this isn't the right approach for workloads that are huge in size and they lead to a lot of errors because manual when when people are doing things or performing operations manually it can lead to a lot of errors and misconfigurations and it wastes a lot of time so infrastructure as code started uh, started be started becoming a very popular concept and term around the world which was managing your infrastructures or the state's infrastructure as code and automating the process of your deployment and release process for our applications so gitops is basically an evolution of this concept and what it means is that we define github repositories or any kinds of git repositories as a single source of truth we can define the state of our of the state of our infrastructure inside this git repository and this state will will directly reflect the state of our service or whatever our use case is in our cases they will be the resources running on the cluster in our uh, in our case they will be the applications running inside a kubernetes cluster and the state of the application is represented in the GitHub, in, in the GitHub or Git repository. One additional benefit of this is that developers can view the developers can always view the state of the infrastructure through repositories without having to access them. Uh, can view the state of the cluster through repositories without having to access the cluster, and it can help us it can help us with an providing an audit of trails or an audit of changes that we have made over to our infrastructure so our infra opinionative infrastructure or GitOps structure is that we have a single repo for all clusters and for all applications teams and environments and we have a single branch with folders representing environment names these environment names can be either these environment names can either be named the same as cluster names and differently as well and we use the apps of app structure that we discussed in the previous sec 
in the previous slides, we use apps of app structure to implement our GitOps structure. And inside, we, we perform application deployments in form of either Helm charts or raw Kubernetes manifests. The benefit of using Helm charts is we could we could modify the templates using modify the configuration using values and these these configurations can be different for different environments such as different environment for we will have a different deployment for stage we'll have a different deployment for our production workloads and we'll have a different configuration for our dev workloads this our github structures support multiple clusters they allow multiple teams tenants or products products can be considered a logical group of related resources that work together then we can define multiple applications and we can define multiple environments let's see all of these in detail so each team or tenant can have one or more applications and these applications belong to different environments and environments can correspond to either the an environment can correspond to either the deployment of the application itself such as we'll have different environment for stage and this this environment will contain the application deployment in form of helm charts on stage then we can have different deployment for cluster in form of a helm chart and we could have additional supporting environments as well let's say we have an environment that contains the pipelines the tecton pipelines that as far previously discussed so we have we, we have an environment that we can call either pipeline or build for this application so an overall hierarchy is that we have the clusters and then we have teams teams have diff teams manage different applications or they work on different products uh, sorry they work on they work on different applications and they develop those applications and those applications can be de deployed into different environments which can belong to a single cluster at a time and we can define multiple environments that belong to multiple clusters a cluster can hold multiple teams and each team can hold multiple applications and each application is deployed into multiple environments so here is a here is a diagram of here is a diagram of our GitOps structure so at the root level we'll define all the teams and inside the teams we'll define a new folder that can contain one or more applications and at the root level as well we can have one or more one or more teams defined as well let's suppose we have a team front end and it has an application called app company docs and this application has then two environments and dev and end prod and these environments actually contain the helm charts or raw manifests that are responsible for deploying our application in addition to this environment dev okay so in addition to this environment dev we can have an one or more environments as well that can belong to a single cluster at a time suppose we want to have an environment for applic for our pipelines so we could simply create a folder at this level and define the pipelines for our application using either raw manifest or a helm chart or any other supported plugin that argo cd can use now the helm charts that are deployed in this in this folder are the helm chart present in this folder are deployed by the argo cd application which is present in the team front ends or the teams folders this argo cd apps folder has the same it has two environments and prod and and dev and these these argo cd applications correspond to the to the folders inside our applications environment folders 
and they these applications are deploying responsible for deploying the resources present inside our applications environments and then these applications can belong to one or more clusters at the root level we have a, another argo cd apps folder and in this folder we have defined clusters you can see there are two folders cluster prod and cluster dev these folders will contain one or more environments that are defined in every team's Argo CD apps folder. So as the name suggests, this env dev, env dev environment will be a part of our cluster dev. So we'll create an Argo CD application that points to this team front end Argo CD apps and end folder. And this is the this is how we implement we use apps of app structure to apps of app structure to implement GitOps for our uh, for our applications. The benefit of using this is we can define multiple clusters and we could simultaneously define multiple environments and these environments can be deployed to different clusters. And in addition to and these environments don't need to be named the same as the cluster name. For example, for the sake of simplicity, I've named them as nvdev, and these could be named anything. And so what needs to be done is that you only need to relate the application inside the clusters folder and point them to the Teams Argo CD environment folder, Teams environment folders. Okay, moving on. So let's say we have, we want to add an environment for deploying our for adding a message queue that is required uh, a message queue that is required or a tecton pipeline let's say we want to add an environment that will contain the tecton pipeline for this app company ui docs application so what we can do is we can define an environment another folder called build or it could be called and build next to these folders and we could define either a helm chart or raw manifests and then we could say that this build environment will be deployed on the dev cluster so we will create another environment inside the argo c another folder inside the argo cd apps folder which will contain the build environments and this build environments can then be placed in the cluster folder so we want to make this specific environment to be deployed inside our dev cluster so we'll just add an application that will point to the teams argo cd and environment folder okay so in practice this is going to look like this so the cluster will have applications that that will have the teams environments the applications that correspond to the teams environments and if we zoom into this team front end so let's say we have a cluster named dev and then we have a team named front end and this front end team has a dev has applications defined in the dev environment so if we if we zoom into this environment if we zoom into or see this team front end dev application you'll see that it has two argo cd applications for uh for a company doc and it contains a simple to-do list app now these applications will actually contain the services the different kubernetes the 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 different kubernetes the different kubernetes resources against our uh, against our application which can be either config maps services deployments and etc so here you can see an example if if we if we look a bit more detail into this into this application you'll see that this application deploys a simple service and a deployment which in turn creates a few child resources so this is a three-tier architecture that we use to manage our GitOps structure we can have multiple teams multiple applications multiple environments all present within the GitOps repository and we could we could efficiently move between different environments so basically if we want to make our dev workload as production we could simply just update the chart version inside the prod environment so we can just simply make this change and our application workloads will be updated simply so 
let's move on towards CD or continuous deployment with Argo CD. Uh, so Argo CD basically runs inside your cluster and it can read, it can re either read Helm repositories or it could read Git repositories and deploy the resources in the, on those repositories in the cluster in the cluster in which the Argo CD, in which Argo CD is running and on more on other clusters as well on which it has access to. So the application, the, so you can see that the team front end and then we have the team folder in the beginning, then we have the app folder and then we have the environment folder. So the resources inside this folder are then deployed then deployed to their relevant clusters. The dev environment will be deployed into the dev cluster and the prod environment will be deployed into the prod cluster. And the cluster pulls the Helm chart and image, the Helm chart and the Docker and the image from image registry and the chart registry. So let's start the demo. Okay, so Initially, in the demo, we are going to discuss the the Helm chart that we create in the application repo, and then we are going to see see an example apps of app structure that we have we are using for our internal use case. We will trigger a pipeline for pull requests. Then we will trigger then we will merge that pull request, and it will trigger another pipeline that is going to do a few steps and then when this 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 pipeline for the merging for when the pr is merged onto the main branch this triggers a pipeline which will update the gitops repo and then we are going to see this changes in argo cd and gitops and in the end we are going to discuss the key takeaways of this implementation we have our GitOps repository over here. At the base level, we have an Argo CD apps folder, and then we have multiple folders for the teams that we have uh, at our end. So Mostify has already explained the apps of app structure, and that is primarily what we use over here. At the base level, the Argo CD apps folder points to uh, there, there are multiple applications inside of this Argo CD apps folder, each one of which is pointing to one of these folders. So you'll have an Argo CD app that points to this folder, and you'll have another one that points to this folder, then you'll have another one pointing to Nodemark. <laughs> Let's open one of these folders up. There's a team called Intio. Let's open that one up. Now, inside of this, you'll find multiple folders again. One of these will be the Argo CD apps folder, and then you'll have folders for all of the applications that this team owns. So we have an empty open soul and an empty gateway. We also have another folder that we will use to deploy the pipelines. You can have a common pipeline for these applications, or you can have separate pipelines for uh, each one of these applications. If you want a common pipeline, then you might want to place them over there. If you have separate pipelines, then you will place the pipeline inside of each application. So if I go back again, at this level, the Argo CD apps folder, if I open this one again, you'll see that it has multiple environments. So each one of this application, the, the application that is owned by uh, the MTO team, will have these environments. If I open the dev environment up, you'll see that we have Argo CD applications that point to each one of the applications that we have. So if I open the MTO console, you'll see that this Argo CD application is pointing to this path, MTU, MTU console, and the dev environment of MTU console. So if I go to this location over here, MTU console dev, then you will be able to see that it will have a help chart for this application. So if I go back, open up MTU console, and the dev environment, you'll see that we have a help chart over here. Similarly, for the other applications, we have Argo CD apps that will point to different environments of those applications. So if I go back again and I open up dev, you'll see that we have another application, uh, Argo CD application, and this one will point to the head chart of another application called QGIF. So 
So in this way, we can have applications for every one of the environment. Uh, if I open up the build environment, then you'll be able to see that we have RBC applications that point to the build folder. And the build folder primarily contains our pipelines. So if I open up this application, empty your build app. In this demo, we are going to view our internal implementation of the GitHub structure that we previously discussed. This is the root Argo CD app. This is deploying a few child applications, and each of these applications correspond to different teams. And each team has multiple applications running. If I open this team called MTO, this will open another Argo CD app, which is deploying a bunch of other Argo CD apps as well. Basically, each team can have different applications and those different applications can have different environments which are running on the same cluster. In this screen, we have on this page, we have a lot of different environments for our applications. So you don't need to confuse yourself with them. But basically, in simple words, these are all of the environments that of the application that we have belonging to this team named MPO. And one of these environments, which is called MPO Dev MPO Console, is actually deploying the application that we have. Let's open this to see. Uh, let's open this to see what it is deploying. So it's loaded, and you can see there are a bunch of Kubernetes resources being deployed. Uh, you can see there is a service, there is a config map, there is a service account. There is a deployment, an app, and a route. Okay, let's see the let's see the GitOps repo for the structure that we just saw. So on this page, you can see we have folders for different teams, Alpha, MQ, and Toolmart, and we have our. Uh, as far I guess already covered this, so we could. Maybe skip a little. Hello, everyone. In this demo, we are going to applications. They have pipeline. Okay. Okay. So in this in this video, we are going to trigger a CI pipeline for when a pull request is open like in the repo. But how we package our application using the charts. So we have an example application over here, the MPO console. Inside of this repository, the application repository, which has the source code, we create a reply folder. Now, if I open this reply folder up, You'll see that we have a head chart over here. We have a chart.yaml, values.yaml. So we have a head chart over here. Now again, if I see this chart.yaml file, you'll see that we've added another chart, the application chart as a dependency. So the application chart is basically a generic chart that we created as indicated. This generic chart can contain all of the components that you might need for deploying your application. So uh, if I open this up real quick, you will see that this application chart, the one that we packaged, has a template supported, which is a component of uh, help. And inside this, you will see that you, you have manifest for all of the things that you might need for deploying your application. You don't need to need all of this. So a lot of these things are disabled by default. <clears throat> but the things that are basic like deployment, the PVC, the ingress, and other things that you might need for your application, like your server, service downloads, they're all present here. So all that you need to do is to configure this chart. <clears throat> so you won't need to put in any templates or any other manifest inside of your own deploy folder, but all you need to do is just reference this folder and configure this chart as per your requirement. So we've done this to make it reusable. We use it for all our applications. This chart is also public. It's highly configurable and uh, it's reusable. It, it, it has community support as well. So 
if you need anything that you think is missing in the application chart, you can just open up a pull request over here. Again, getting back to our application, uh, let's go back to the deploy folder and open up the values.yaml now. And inside the values.yaml, like I mentioned, we have the application chart reference and then we configured it as per our needs. We defined the application name and then we configured the deployment because uh, we want a few console to be deployed as a Kubernetes deployment. And then we have some volumes in environment variables that we've considered the probes, uh, volume mounts, service routes, whatever you need. Like I said, config map and all of these. So this is the this is how we use Helm to package our application. And if I go back to the root, of course, we have a Docker file over here that we are going to use to build the image for our application when we run the TechCon pipeline. So now we are going to create a pull request on this repository to see the CICD build to an action. I'm going to go into the source folder and add a small change to one of the files. I'm going to open this up, edit this file, and I am going to make a change. So this will be enough to trigger the pipeline for changes. Create a request. Once I've done that, I will wait for a few seconds for the pipeline, the Tecton pipeline to trigger and push the status of the pipeline back to the support. So now it has appeared. Now over here you can see continuous integration, Tecton pending, which means the pipeline is still running. And once I open up the details, It will take you to the OpenShift console that has details of the pipeline run. So over here, I you can see that we have a bunch of tasks over here, which makes sure that the code you entered is fully tested. It doesn't have any problems. And then after the testing, it will just push some comment back on the pull request that will tell you that pipeline has succeeded and then you can after the verification after the pipeline has done you can merge your pull request. I will very quickly go over all of these tasks uh, or at least a few of them so you can understand what's happening over here. So we have this set commit status task over here which is actually the task that that pushed this change or pushed this uh, comment back to, GitHub, back to GitHub. So once this task succeeds, it, it will show you the commit status. After that, it will clone the repository and create a git tag for it. This is something we can skip for now. After doing all of that, it will run cube linting and code linting so it can verify that your Kubernetes, man Kubernetes manifests are correct. It will render all of the manifests that you added for your chart, and it will also perform code linting. And then we have SonarCube, which will test the quality of our code. Then we have this build image bag, which basically determines whether we need to build the image again or not. If you have not made any changes to the source and you just change something in the Helm chart or any of the files that do not uh, change anything in the image, then this will uh, output false. Uh, otherwise, it will be. And based upon this flag, this task will determine whether it needs to build a new image or whether it needs to re tag the old image and push to the image repository. After all of that, we have some other scans, security scans, the Trivi and Chekhov. Then we comment back on the PR about the status of uh, these tasks. 
and then uh, the very end, NP basically packages the header chart again and push it to the chart repository, which in our case is Nexus. Once that is done, we update the CD repo, but in case of a in case of a pull request, this is not updated. This only happens when you merge with main because only in that case you need the development environment to be updated. And at the very end, you have push main tag, which is also which also only runs uh, once you merge with main. And then you again have the set commit status class, which will show you the status of your commit and of your pipeline. Once your pipeline is succeeded, we can go back to this pull request and you can see that the pipeline has already commented back on this PR that the image for this PR is available at this location and the pipeline ran successfully. After so now we are going to create a pull request on this repository to this nexus. So now we are going to create a pull request on this repository to see the CICD pull in action. I'm going to do this pull request, and you can see that the pipeline has already commented back on this PR that. The image for this PR is available at this location and the pipeline ran successfully. After all of this, I am going to merge this pull request. So now we are going. So let's take a look at what happens when we merge this pull request. So Mustafa has approved this pull request and now I can merge it. Confirm merge. It's merging and now this will also trigger a pipeline. So if I go back to the pipeline runs or the pipelines and over here, I'll see pipeline running. Okay, so my pipeline is already running and you can see that it says MTO console. So I open this. Now this is running the pipeline. And now most of the steps are the same. Actually, all of the steps are the same, but we had some flags that determined with it needed to uh, update the CD repository or not. So based upon uh, whether it's pull request or uh, merged to main, it will just update the CD repo. In case of a pull request, we do, need, we do not need to update the GitOps repo, but when, the, when there's a merge to the main, of course, the GitOps repo need, needs to be updated because we need to update the tag for the image and for the image chart as well. So now let's wait for a few minutes for this pipeline to finish. Okay, so now the GitOps repository has been updated. Now I've opened this uh, path already, the MTU console, and in the dev folder, right now we have a chart.yaml, and the values file and this has the tag 1032 now this will be updated by the tag by the pipeline there's already a comment over there now let's see when this is updated so now update cd repo so it must have updated the values file you now you can see over here that this is just now. And the tag previously was 1032, and now it's 1033. So now the pipeline has changed this. So let's see 
Hello. When a pull request is merged into the main branch of MTO console repo, a Technon pipeline is triggered, which primarily checks out the code, generates, uh, builds, builds, and compiles the code. It generates a new tag that will be this tag is then used by for for our Docker image, which is built and pushed into our image registry as part of this pipeline. Then this tag is also used by our Helm chart, which is again packaged and pushed onto a Helm registry, and then we update our GitOps repo with this tag. These are primarily the steps of this, of the pipeline. This tag is also pushed onto the repo. As you can see that we have a tag 1.0.33, which was pushed as a result of the pipeline that was just triggered. If we go over to, the, to our GitOps, our team name is MTO, the application name is MTO console. And if we see the dev environment, you can see that we have a new change just a while ago. If I see this commit, you can see that it updates the, it pumps the chart version in the dependencies. And it also pumps the image version as well from 1.0.32. .1.0.33 and when let's see the chart and the values as well so you can see that this image the, the this tag is updated in this chart.yml file for the helm chart and this tag is also updated for our docker image or uh, container image now we have our now let's move on to Argo CD. This Argo CD application is looking over, is watching the this path in the repo and it deploys the resources that are generated as a result of this chart. When this chart is updated by the pipeline, it syncs the changes onto the cluster. If I click on app details, you can see that the image of this app over here is 1.0.33. And if I click over to the deployment and view the image, you can see that the image is our latest image that we just pushed, 1.0.33. So this is a brief tutorial of our CI CD workflow with Argo CD. GitOps, Helm, and TikTok. Thank you. Okay, so now we have some time for the question answers uh, session. Uh, Marcus, you had some questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you and you can ask your questions over here. Now you're unmuted, you can speak if you want to. Um, Asfa, he had a few questions uh, which he has mentioned. Uh, I, I think we can answer those questions first. Yes, so I've answered most of the questions in chat. Let me open it again and let me answer them again.
Okay, so there was a question whether this is the recommended approach for handling teams, uh, for handling too many teams, and should everything be placed in a in a single repository? So, although I mentioned that we've already tested it with a few of our customers with who have a lot of teams, um, it's the recommended approach by us. It's like sticker opinionated thing. If it suits you, you can use it. Uh, otherwise, you can div divide it into multiple GitOps repository. But we do recommend having a single source of truth. Um, the repository itself doesn't get used by a developer too often. Like if you want to update the tag or the uh, the application in just the development environment, then then your Tecton pipeline will be handling all of that. You won't even need to go into the repository or look into it. Once the repository is created, the teams or the tenants are added, the environments are set up by your delivery engineer, then you, the developer does not need to bother about the repository that much. The only time he will be opening that repository will be when he wants to promote the application from one environment to another. So we only make the changes in the dev environment, like the pipeline only changes the tags uh, in the dev environment, but if you need to update the image or the chart in another environment, then you will just navigate to that specific environment of your application and you will just uh, update the tag over there. But again, if uh, you have, like, if, if you want to split it into multiple repository based on your needs, then you can. Though the structure that we have does have multi-cluster, multi-tenant, multi-environment, and multi-application support. The merge to the development branch are not approved by anyone. So this is basically why, have, why we have such a long pipeline. When you merge the PR, uh, then it the that PR is actually approved by someone when you create a, when you open up a PR on one of your application, then whoever is reviewing your PR will obviously check the pipeline first. If the pipeline succeeds, only then the merge will be made. So you do have someone manually reviewing your PR at the point. But when the Tecton pipeline makes the change on the development environment, then you don't really need a reviewer for that because everything, all of the changes are already reviewed previously by your pipeline, by whoever merged your code in, into your application, and um, it will be good to go. But yes, when you need to promote it from dev to stage, of course, someone will be reviewing it, and you'll have, uh, obviously, your own GitHub rule for that. If somebody can make changes on the stage uh, environment or the prod environment or not. Uh, how the Tecton pipeline is able to make the changes to the repository directly uh, directly is uh, that we uh, give those permissions specifically inside of our pipeline. We have when we add the pipeline task, then if if you actually go take a look at those cluster tasks that we've added, then we've given them um, either the personal access token, pipeline tokens, or the SSH token. So the pipeline actually uses those tokens to to create the changes on the repository. Otherwise, it won't be able to. What if the developer wants to update their configuration of the application? Don't they have to update the it in GitOps repo. No, they won't have to update in the GitOps repo. Let me show you how it's done. Um, am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am. I guess share my, sharing the screen. So again, I'll give you an example so you get a better idea of it. I'm going to head over to empty console. Now, let's suppose I am a developer and I need to change something in the source code. I'll just make the changes over here, and then Tecton will pick it up from there. It will trigger the pipeline, and once I merge, once someone merges my pull request, 
then the GitOps repository will automatically be updated by Tekton and I won't need to look into it. The only time I will need to look into it is when I need to promote it from one environment to another. I'll also show you this picture so it becomes even more clear. So I am a developer. I made a change to GitHub, the version, the repository of my application, and then the pipeline is triggered. This is all handled by the pipeline. The GitOps repository update is handled by the pipeline. The PR is also, uh, it, it doesn't create the PR. It actually uh, merges the chain directly onto main. It, it pushes the chain directly onto main, and then Argo CD picks it up. Okay, so we have one more question from Marcus, and I think we can wrap it up then. <clears throat> All right, I understand that now. I mean, what if I want to change some configuration change? Let's say I want to change the value in the config map. Do you want to change a value in different? Uh, again, we have two scenarios. If you make a change inside of this right here, inside your application folder, then it will go through. Um, uh, your pipeline and the Helm chart will be packaged. But if you want to make configuration changes for different environment, let's suppose you have this image pool secret over here next to the Docker config port. Now this is obviously, this will get through in all environments if you have the same version, uh, the same image version and the same help chart version. But you can actually override this image pool secret inside of your GitOps repository, then the developer might need, might actually need to go to your GitOps repository and make the change. Like I've said, once you have a scenario where you want to promote your application, then the developer will have to look into it. So in the MTO, if I take a look at uh, MTO console, and then I take a look at the dev environment, then again, we have a Helm chart over here. If I have a production or a stage environment, then I can override that image pool secret that I showed to you inside of the values file. So what I'll have is that I'll just have another folder over here, a stage folder over here. And inside of that stage folder, I'll have a different values file in which I'll override whatever configuration I had made in my application repository. All of the con common configurations for all, all of the environments go here, but the things that are separate, they can be overwritten in the GitOps repository. No problem. So, Sanya, I guess uh, we can wrap up the session now. If you have any more questions, then you uh, this uh, recording of this webinar will be shared on the LinkedIn page. You can even write down your questions under that recording, and some one of us will probably answer you there. Uh, thank you, you so there. much, Aspa. Uh, yes, uh, as Aspa has already told all of you that the recording will be shared on our LinkedIn page as well as on the YouTube channel in a, in a few days. Uh, you can uh, check them and we'll also probably email all of you. So uh, if you have any further questions, you can uh, mention in the comment section and one of us will get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you Asfa and Mustafa for this wonderful session. Thank you, Sanya. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good. Goodbye, everyone.